How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. With COVID, we've seen a crazy spike in the use of cloth face masks. You know, me being a medical student, that is something that I've appreciated. I've had to use them and stuff and running rounds and stuff like that with really just a lot of people. It's not going anywhere. We're dealing with COVID, but it's a fashion. It's part of our, our fashion now. What better way than to augment these cloth face masks? And so I decided to actually come up with a course teaching you how to augment your cloth face mask from start to finish and teaching you the design process, the augmentation process, and what you could do with something that is meant to protect us. We can make it better and we can make it aesthetically pleasing. And so with that, check out more at stuckonisland.com courses and the course will be available on Skillshare. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Iltopia. Here, you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly, and you get access to my Discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon, from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support, so definitely check it out. You could go to shop.iltopia.com, and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, Follow me on all the social nets. How's it going? My name is Steven Christian. I'm a comic book illustrator, animator, and augmented reality mobile developer. And in this course, I'll be teaching you how to make an augmented reality cloth face mask from start to finish. This course is meant for those that have experience with Unity and other creative tools, as well as a knack for crafting. It's this lovely intersection of both of those but the directions should be clear enough for anyone to follow. So you don't have to be an expert, you don't have to be a beginner, and you don't have to be an intermediate. Although, this is sort of the happy medium is for an intermediate a creator. This project is completely experimental, so there may be some snags along the way, but with a little trial and error, I truly believe that you can add a fun little project to your portfolio. As you follow along with the lesson, you'll learn a couple of things. You will learn a drafting process from designing a character, learn basics of Photoshop for designing characters, learn how to create a repeating pattern based on your character design, learn sublimation and design tips for face mouth cloths. You'll learn basic augmented reality image tracking You'll learn basic coding for C Sharp with Unity. You'll learn to debug an augmented reality experience. And you'll also learn some basic animation in Unity with code and with a timeline. To get all this stuff started, you'll definitely need some tools. First and foremost, you'll need some photo editing software. In this course, we're using Photoshop, but you could use GIMP, you could use a variety of other softwares. We'll need sublimation paper, we'll need a sublimation printer, we'll need sublimation ink, you'll need some Teflon sheets or parchment paper, you'll need some thermal tape, a heat press, which I use a Cricut Easy Press for this one. Obviously, you'll need some sublimation cloth face mask or anything that's polyester, to be honest with you. You'll need Unity 3D, which is a free 
3D animation, game development, and augmented reality software. You'll need a Vuforia license to do the augmented reality stuff. And you can find that at developers.vuforia.com. And you may need some 3D modeling software or some additional 3D assets to add to your experience. So that's about it. So in section one of this course, we're going to be focusing on designing a character. In this section, we'll go through the process of creating our own characters for our face mask. We will first start by sketching our character. We will then clean up the idea and the sketch. Then we'll finalize the design and color it. At the end, you will have a design that we can place on our face mask and turn into an AR experience for our face. In our first lesson, we'll go over how to design a character. So first and foremost, we'll need to create a canvas, which we'll do in Photoshop. Then we'll create a new layer. We'll select our favorite brush, use shapes to create interesting characters. And those shapes include circles, squares, and triangles. Then we'll combine the shapes to make different parts of the character. And after that, we'll have fun with the design and take time to make something that is enjoyable for us and for other people. If you have any artistic style or skill, this is the definitely time to. If you have any artistic style or skill, this is definitely the time for it to shine. So in this section, we'll be going over how to design our character for the main design of our AR face mask. And so a lot of the stuff that I do is character driven, but you can make it anything that you want. So in Photoshop, we'll create a new canvas by going to create new. And then I'll just start with a 1080 by 1920. And this is just a blank canvas that we're going to use. We could always scale it up and down if we like. If you saw the optional how to draw section, then you'll know that we start off with a so first I will, so before we get started, I'll pick my brush and then I'll go down to the bottom right and I'll create a new layer. And now that I have my new layer, we're ready to begin. So if you saw my optional how to draw section of this course, we went over simple shapes. And so the simple shapes were a circle, a box, and a triangle. And you can modify those however you want. With this, I'm going to be working with these shapes and I will zoom in. I'll be working with these shapes. So with this, I'll be working with these shapes to create some interesting characters. I have a character called Nimbus, who is a sort of a fluffy teddy bear that's in a bunny suit, an orange bunny suit. And so I plan on using that as my main design, but you could try anything else. And so with it, we're actually going to design the character. And for this will prepare us for our challenge at the end of this lesson. So with Nimbus, we're going to have, we're gonna start off with sort of a bean shape. And to get that bean shape, think of it as you're making one circle, making another circle, and then you're just connecting it. And you're getting that bean shape. And so now that we have that bean shape, we're going to just modify it a little bit more. So notice how I'm not really erasing as much, because we really don't need to. These are just sketches. And we're just gonna fine tune this drawing as much as possible. Like that. 
So now that we have our bean shape, let's say that this will be our head right here, and this will be our body. So head, body. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna have some eyes, we're gonna have a nose, and then bears tend to have a mouth that is a different texture than the rest of the body. The other thing that we'll do is with Nimbus is that we're going to give it more of a, give it a little cutout for his head and the rest of the body is going to be covered with the bear suit. So we're going to just give him some ears, some bunny ears, a little belly, some legs, and some hands, just like that. And what that looks like over here is again some ears, some bunny ears, a belly, some eyes, nose, mouth, and a cutout for the head. Then we'll give it some legs and some hands. So mind you, we also need to give it a tail. So we'll just say we have the tail right here. like that. So this looks like a bean, but we also want to have, make sure it's fluffy. So we'll just give it a little bit of fluff around the body. In lesson two, it's time for us to clean up this sketch. So first we're going to create a new layer. We're going to layer that on top of the sketch layer that we already had. And then we're going to make our sketch layer 50% opacity so that we could see through it. It's kind of transparent. Then we're gonna pick a brush that is either thicker or the same brush, and we're gonna to begin to clean up the design, essentially tracing over it. The goal with this is to take the messy sketch that we have and add cleaner lines to it. Even though we spent much time with the details in the sketch phase, we can continue adding more details in the new design to really make it pop. Also, don't be afraid to use the transform tools to modify the figure to your liking if you don't want to draw it additionally. Okay, so this looks a little messy now. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer. So create new layer at the bottom. We're going to set the layer one. We're going to change that to about, we'll go with, 50% and then we'll zoom in and we'll start fleshing out the design again. So we'll go back to layer two and with layer two, we're going to start drawing over and tracing this. So we know that we have our tail. have our tail and then we'll have our fluff and so we could modify the fluff a little bit more so that it looks a little more fluffy again it doesn't have to be perfect it just needs to be effective so in the creative process feel free to change as much as you would like. Don't feel like the the design is set in stone until you actually create the design 
and finish it. So everything else is fair game. So we have the legs. We have the belly. We have the arms. We have the ears. So make that a little more. Got the ears. All the ears. Of the eyes, nose, and then we'll give it a little more of a cutout. Is what we have so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna modify it a little bit cuz I feel like it's not as as squishy and fluffy as I want it to be so I'll modify it and then I'll create a new layer in lesson three it's time to finalize our design and that's gonna be with our line work so again we're going to create another layer we're going to set the previous layers to 50% opacity. Then we're going to select a hard round brush with the very opaque color, preferably black. And then we're going to trace the details of the design with much cleaner lines. This is going to be our final line work, and so you want to make sure this is great. And again, feel free to tweak the design until your heart is content. You can add more details, you can go and go beyond what your sketches did but the goal is to have very clean lines at the end of this process. And so this is a flushed out layer, it's nice, but it's, it doesn't hit the mark just quite. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finalize it with a, a different brush. So I'm going to take a, just a general brush, general hard brush, and I'm gonna give it around yeah around around four and I'll go through and I will uh, I'll, I'll make it a little bit larger so instead of the brush being around four I'll have it around seven yeah and this will give me a little more wiggle room. So I have the tail. I have the belly. I have the legs. Have the arms. No, just have the arm just be like that. Have the ears. Do the face cut out. Eyes. I'll 
I'll do the face or the mouth and the nose. And so now, time to just finish it up by adding the extra fluff. And the reason I ended up doing all the, the body parts first is so that when I do the fluff, it allows me to work around those instead of having to go over them. Boom. And so now I have a I have a character. In lesson four, we're going to add our base color to our design now. So now that the line work is down, it's time to color it. And we need to do that with the base color. So again, we're going to make a new layer and we're going to place it under our final layer line work. And we're going to use the magic wand tool, which would be a fun tool to play with. And we're going to essentially select the white space around it and it's gonna have black dashed lines, and we're essentially going to use the outline to expand a little bit. And when we do that, we'll then have a layer with the line work, and we're able to make the line work a bounding box for our color. And so with the color layer selected, We'll right click within that dashed lines and in the screen we're going to select inverse selection and they're going to take our paint bucket tool and we're going to add a bright color to that as a layer. Afterwards we're going to select the magic wand and then we're going to right click the canvas and we're going to deselect to remove the dashed lines. And at the end you should have a base color under the layer of your line work. So now that I have the character, I will actually make a new image or new layer. I'll put that under it and then I will go to my magic wand. With the magic wand, I'll select the image that I have. I'll click the magic wand on the white space and you'll notice how it has an interesting outline around it. So what I'll do is I'll go to select, I'll go to modify, and I'll go to expand. And by expand, it'll allow me to get a little bit closer to the black lines right here. So I'll do about two pixels, and that gets it a little closer to the inside. And so if we zoom in, you'll see that the dashed lines are within the, the black. So that's exactly what we want. And so now we'll go ahead and click the layer below and we'll actually name this layer uh, base color. And we'll name this layer lines. So we got the base color and we have the lines. So the lines is the one with the line work. The base color is the one with the uh, that we're going to add the base color to. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we right click. We're going to select inverse and you'll notice how it uh, inverses the selection. So there's nothing on this bounding box. It's all right here. And then we're going to go to our paint bucket tool. We're going to choose a color. So I tend to choose a color that is a color that I wouldn't use for the actual image, but it's a way to separate the image. So like lime green or something like that. And now just choose that and I'll add the color to the bounty bucks on the base color. So now I have that, I can go through, I'll click the, click the selection right here and you just click deselect, right click and deselect. And now we have our base color. So like other previous lessons, we're going to first start by creating a new layer. And then we're going to right click that new layer and select 
create a clipping mask. This will parent the new layer to the base color that we have so that we can keep the color within the lines. And then we're going to choose our favorite colors that we want for our design. And we're just going to have fun with the process. When we finish coloring, we'll convert our design to a smart object with all the selected layers that we have. And we can do that by right clicking and converting to smart object. And this makes things easier to manage when we're designing a, a larger pattern. With the clipping mask and other effects, you can customize the design even further without having to actually change the design that you worked on. And so have fun with it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create another layer. We're going to name that color. And then we're going to right click. We're going to create clipping mask. And what the clipping mask does is that it parent it's parented to the base color. And so anytime I decide to draw anything outside of the base color box, so you'll notice how I'm able to draw here, but if I draw outside of it, nothing happens. That's because it's uh, based on the base color bounding box. And so what I'll do is we will go through and we'll start coloring our design. So I'll just go to the swatches, look at all the colors that I have. I know that the the mouth is going to be like a tan, so I'll zoom in and I'll just color the mouth a tan color. Then I'll color the nose a dark gray and the eyes a dark gray. We'll get a lighter gray and we'll do that for the rest of the fur. And then we'll go with the we'll go with the uh, orange, and I'll increase the size of this so that it covers a little bit more area. And so we'll take this orange and we'll just get all of the bunny suit. Make the bunny suit an orange. What's good with the black lines is that it allows us to uh, not have to be perfect with separating the different colors. And then I'll get a yellow, like a fairly light yellow, and then I'll color the center with that. Bingo. So I'll make a smaller, I'll get a smaller brush and I'll get a lighter orange, and that lighter orange will be for the tail. And voila, we have our Nimbus character. And so the final thing that you can do is you go and you select the lines layer, you select the color layer and the base layer, and we can make this a smart object. And the smart object makes things a lot easier to work with. And so what we'll do is we will right click and we'll convert to smart object. Now that we have that converted to smart object, we can name it Nimbus. Voila, and there we go. If you want to change the colors, you definitely can. So you could go to adjustments 
and then you could go to hue and saturation and one interesting thing is that we can right click and create clipping mask and so now when we go to if we want to change the color we can we can do that by going through and just moving this toggle so now we have a green nimbus we have an orange nimbus a red one a blue one purple one we have a whole bunch of them and if we want to colorize it we can as well and so that's an easy way to change the colors now that we have them and they'll they'll be complementary colors to the ones that we already have and so with that I will save it as always And we'll name this Nimbus Design. So now that we have our Nimbus design, the challenge is to make three to five other variations or angles of the Nimbus design. Now it's time for our challenge. Challenge number one. And so we're going to create three to five more designs of the same character or a different character. And this will allow us to make a design in a pattern that's more unique, as well as easy to use for augmented reality tracking on our face mask with an app. And so the goal with this is to create a whole bunch of different designs as, that we could use as a pattern that we could tile for our face mask. So go ahead and have fun with it. Now that we have our Nimbus design, the goal is to make three to five different variations of this Nimbus design for our pattern. And so go ahead with the challenge, design three to five more ones. If you wanna create three to five more characters, you can as well. You have more power to do that as well. And we will create a decent design from this. Okay, so now that we have our design, it's time for section two. 
which is creating a pattern for our cloth face mask. We'll end up with a square design with a repeating pattern that integrates our character design into it very, very seamlessly. So here we go, it should be a good time. Okay, so in this section, we're going to be talking about how to put together our design. And our design is going to be a square design, it's gonna be a pattern that we should be able to duplicate and replicate. So in lesson six, it's time to make our square pattern. And so to make a repeating pattern, we must start with a new square document. And so you could just start with create a new document by going to file new. And then we're gonna set the size to 600 pixels by 600 pixels. And then we're gonna also set the resolution to 300 DPI. And we're gonna use the designs from our previous lesson in the challenge to paste them into the new document. Feel free to resize them and fit them into the document how you want. And then we're gonna make a grid to lay out our pattern. And you can do that by just going to view and the new guide layer. Then we're gonna set the gutter to 0 0.06 inches, set the margins to 0 0.03 inches. We're gonna have three columns and we're gonna have three rows. And after that, we're just going to place the design elements within the squares of that design pattern, and we're going to build out the design pattern. And so what we'll do is we will actually create a new pattern. So we're going to go to new, file new. We're going to make the pattern six hundred by six hundred. We're going to have the resolution to be uh, 300. We're going to make it a new layer. And these are the three designs that I have. And so if you did your challenge from the last section, you should have uh, five different designs. Five, a little, you know, I guess three to five different designs. It doesn't have to be three, or it doesn't have to be three. It doesn't have to be five. It could actually be as many as you want but uh, I'll be working with this. These are different variations of the Nimbus illustration that I have. And I modified it since the, since the last lesson and we'll actually just drag these over. So, and so we'll actually just copy and then we'll go here and we're going to paste them. And it looks like they're a little too big. So I'll just make them a little smaller like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going, I like to start off by creating a pattern. And so this pattern is going to be one that uh, really replicates a lot of the different things that we find in the square. And so what we'll do is we'll actually go through and I will give it a grid. And so I'll go to new guide layout, select that and you just go to a view and then a new guide layout right there. And then I want it to have multiple rows and I want it to have multiple uh, columns. And so with that, uh, I'll say that if the rows are, if the rows are 0.6, then we'll have the gutters be 0 0.067 inches as well. And then actually we'll change, we'll change it to just not 0 0.067. We'll just have 0 0.06. We'll have those for those. That way it's easier to have this be 0.3. And the reason we're going to do 0 0.3 is because when we duplicate this or we replicate this, we want to make sure that this side and this side equals this side. And so now we are going to add, we'll say a, we'll say, hmm, say number of columns, we'll have three and then we'll have number of rows, we'll have 
3 as well. That way we have a square. So now that we have that, we have our guides. And so now we can just place our Nimbus in here. We'll just try to fit them within the boxes. You can resize them. You can rework them. You can modify them. as long as they fit within the boxes. And so if you, you have the option to modify these so you can duplicate them by clicking Alt and then rotating. And you could just go ahead and rotate it. If you want to flip it upside down, you could go to layer, or is it edit? Yeah, if you want to flip it upside down, you could go to edit, and then you go to flip horizontal. By doing that, You can rotate it and make it look slightly different. And I'll go ahead and do that with another one of these. I'll have them face up. We'll go to transform, go to flip. Another one I'll do, one at the bottom. And we will, again, go to transform, go to flip. And then last but not least, we want to have a little bit of variation. So, hmm, maybe if I took this one, put that here, took this one, put it here, and then we'll have it rotate the other way, like that. And so now we have our lovely pattern. So what we can do is we can save it. So we'll save and we'll say Nimbus pattern. And we'll save it. In lesson seven, we're going to actually define our pattern. And so this is essentially finalizing the pattern that we have. And so we select all the design elements on the canvas. We go to edit, define pattern, and then we can name the pattern and we could save it. And you could hide everything and create a new layer, choose the paint bucket tool. And then instead of filling with a color, you could fill with the pattern that you just made. And essentially you just select the pattern you made uh, and you fill the canvas in with that pattern. And so you could also create a larger document that's larger than 300 or 600 pixels wide. And you could test by filling in the pattern on that canvas. And then you could modify that pattern 
to essentially show the dynamics of it. If you want to modify the original pattern, you're actually going to have to redesign and redefine the pattern that you have. But we could do that by going back to our template that we made and then actually going and adding different elements to it. So you could add simple shapes, you could add as many layers as you want, and then you could obviously organize it if it gets too crazy. But pattern designing and finalization is pretty seamless once you get the hang of it. So now that we have our pattern, we can go ahead and we can select it all. So we'll go drag select it all. Go to edit. We go to define pattern. When we define our pattern, we'll call it Nimbus Pattern 01. Oh, we'll do 20. So 001. Boom. And so what happens there is if I go ahead and add a new layer, hide everything else, add a new layer, I can go through and I could choose a pattern that I want. And so if I go to if I go to the paint bucket and I select pattern at the top, I go to the drop down menu. I have some previous patterns that I had, but this is the one that I just created right here. So I could choose that and I place it in like that. And so one thing that you can do is I'll go ahead and create new and we're going to make a 1080 by 1080 square. Let's create a new square 1080 by 1080. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer and this is going to test out our pattern. So again, make sure you have the paint bucket tool, you're in pattern, and then we selected the pattern that we have here. And so how it's going to work is that we just click the pattern. We click it just like we would any paint bucket tool. And then we're going to see it happen. And you'll notice that this is a lot smaller than this one. I might, let me actually show that. Yeah, so it's a lot smaller than this. And that's because this is 300 pixels by 300 pixels. And this is 1080 by 1080. So you'll notice that because it's 1080 by 1080, it's actually going to be a like two, two to three times as much. So you'll see the pattern repeat over and over again. And so I'll actually delete this layer. We'll create a new layer and we're going to make this canvas much bigger. So we'll just make the canvas bigger by holding alt and then dragging all the way up. And then when you do that, we're able to go to the paint bucket tool again, again, go to pattern, choose our design, and then notice how many nimbuses we're going to spawn. Tons of them. And that's because it's to scale. And so now that we have our pattern, we can actually make modifications to the pattern if we would like. So, when you make modifications, it's going to change the pattern. It's, uh, it's actually going to create a new pattern, but you can get very, very creative with it. And so we'll go to, we'll go to shapes and we'll just add some, some quirky shapes to it. So how about we have, how about we have a, like a flower star. So have a flower and star. And so we're going to choose our color. Our color is going to be, we'll say red. We'll have a color be red. And we're going to just add them to the center. Just like that. 
So we'll just zoom in a little bit and we'll just add these to the center. Then I'll go ahead and get that one. And then I'll duplicate it twice. So one here. Actually, yeah, that's it. And so one thing that we also need to take into consideration is that we also have to worry about this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So what we can do with that is we just create a create one on the edge that's equidistant, create one on this edge. That's about the same distance. Yep. And then we can actually delete these and we'll modify them by just duplicating these red ones. And so we'll just make one right there. We'll make one right there. And we'll make one right there. So we have our flowers. So what we can do to organize this is we can just select them all and we'll go to create a new group. And we'll just call these flowers. And the same thing with Nimbus. We'll go through, select them all, add to a group, and we'll call this Nimbus. Nimbus says. Nimbuses. There we go. So now we have our flowers and we have our other stuff. So now we just need to make sure that these align properly. Otherwise it's going to look kind of weird. So we'll just bring this one down so that the crosshair is there. We'll bring this one down so that the crosshair fits. This one down, this one down this one down, this one down, and this one actually doesn't look too bad. There you go, that looks good. And the same can be said about this. So we'll just move this over, move this over, move this over so that the point is on the same part. Looks like the point is here, looks good. Uh, the point looks decent there. And then this will move that over. That looks okay. And it's just a lot of trial and error with this. It's not going to be perfect. So now that we have that, we're actually going to just go to edit and we're going to go to define pattern and we'll say that this is Nimbus pattern 002, like that. And so now when you go to your paint bucket, we go to pattern and then you'll notice that there's another pattern there, this one that we just created. So we'll go to our next, our large canvas and we're going to create a new layer layer two, we're going to go to paint bucket, again pattern, we're going to select the new pattern, and then we're going to add it. And now we have our dots, just like that. And if you zoom in, we got them as close to, as close to perfect as we possibly could. So now they look very, very seamless, and you can't tell, you cannot tell 
where uh where the seams are. It's just really difficult to tell where the seams are now. And so if you want to take it to the next level, you can make it a little bit larger. So making it a little bit larger and you can rotate it. And by rotating it, it gives it a little more, it gives it a little more uh, dynamic looking to it. Just makes it look a little more dynamic. And so now we have our pattern right there. Our Nimbus pattern with, uh, with the red stars. So what we'll do is we'll actually save this. And we'll say that this is final Nimbus pattern. And then we'll save this as well. And we'll save this as well. It's time for challenge two. We all love challenge two. And so with this, we're gonna create a unique pattern and we're gonna incorporate all the different designs that we have. We're gonna make some new graphics, maybe with some interesting pattern schemes to it. We could add our own colors. And really it's just a way to make something unique that will really pop. And so it's time to flex your creative skills. You know, make a pattern that really, really pops. And so the challenge for this would be to create your own unique pattern that incorporates your designs, some cool motion graphics and, and graphics. Uh, if you want to play with colors, you could do that as well. And then create your one of a kind unique pattern that we're going to put on our face mask. Here we go, section three, it's time to sublimate our face mask. And so first and foremost, we have to get some sublimation face mask or some sublimation cloth to get this to work. Uh, the best bet is to get some polyester stuff. So if you have something with polyester, make sure it's the most polyester. 100% polyester works the best for sublimation. Uh, and you don't wanna go any less than like 60% polyester because then you're just not going to have a great design but with the face mask you want to know the dimensions to base the design off of and so we need to actually you know go to the printer we'll need an eco tank printer I have a Epson eco tank which is pretty affordable and you can convert it to a sublimation printer by using various printer inks and more importantly, the printer has to have a rear feed for the paper to go through. For the paper, you need sublimation paper, you could, which you could get from Amazon or any craft store. Uh, the ink, obviously, I use Printer Jacks ink, which you can find on Amazon. And these are all fairly reasonable if you uh, choose the right tools. Obviously, you could follow the tools that I have, and or you could use other tools from other people. Okay, so 
The next thing that we need to do is actually get some sublimation face masks. And so in order to actually print and do all that stuff, we need a couple of things. So I'm on Amazon Prime right now, and all we need to do is we need to go and type in sublimation face mask. And again, you have to make sure it's sublimation because that's what we need to do our, our blank stuff. And so what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the ones that we have. Uh, and it's really making sure that it's sublimation and not just a regular cloth. And so a, a good one that I like to use is this uh, Sublinks one. As you can tell, I, I ordered it pretty recently. And it gives you a pretty decent amount. And they allow you to uh, actually print on them. So they end up being a pretty decent size. And what we need to know is the actual size of it so it's 18 centimeters by 12 centimeters and that's crucial because that's what we're going to set up our design for and so now that we know that it's 18 centimeters by 12 centimeters we can go ahead and and go back to our Photoshop and create a design for it that allows us to uh, make it make it to scale and so we'll head over to Photoshop again. It's lesson eight. It's time to make our print template for our sublimation. And so the first thing that we need to do is create a new document in Photoshop or any photo editing software that you use. And you could just create it as a letter size because that's the size of paper that we have. You want to make a rectangle that's about the same size as the face mask dimensions. I chose 22 centimeters by 15 centimeters. It gives me a little bit more room to work with. And then we can rotate the angle to make sure it fits on the actual page. And then we're going to import our pattern that we made from our previous lesson. And we're going to rotate the design so that it makes a clipping mass of the rectangle we made. Then next we can add a stroke as sort of a boundary box or a boundary for our print area. And so it's pretty simple. So now that we're in Photoshop, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make our design. And so I'll just make it as a regular uh, 10 by 10, I suppose. And then we'll make a square. So we're going to go to the shapes, rectangle tool, and I'll just click in the center. And what it's going to do is it's going to say create rectangle. And so what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's going to be at least 18 by 12. So I'll actually have 20 cm and then I'll have 15. Uh, I wouldn't say 15. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do 15. Gives me a little bit more room to work with. 15 cm. And so now that I have that, I have my, I have my box. Huh, that is really, really big. That is huge, actually. So now that I know that it's, it's really, really big, huh, let me actually create a new, oh yeah, I, do, I definitely don't want that. So yeah, let's go and we'll have just eight. I'll close that, I'll start that over. Okay, so now that I, now that we have the dimensions for what we want our face mask to be, we're actually going to need to uh, make a, now that we have the dimensions for what we, what we want the face mask to be, now we're actually going to have to need a, a, a draft of it for the design. Now that we have an idea of what the dimensions are for the face mask, now we need to set up our design in Photoshop. And by doing that, we need to understand that when we're printing, we're gonna be printing on an actual sheet of paper but with a dye sub ink and dye sub paper. And so what I'll do is I'll actually create an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And so we'll do just an eight and a half by 11. So I have an eight and a half by 11 right here. And we're gonna to go to the rectangle tool. We're going to select the rectangle tool and we're going to say we want 24 centimeters by 
15 centimeters. Or actually, I'll say 20, I'll say 22 centimeters. Doesn't need to be that big. And so now, when we rotate it, we just rotate it to make sure it fits. And this is going to be our pattern right here. This is going to be how big our, our print is going to be. So it works. Since we have an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, we'll, we'll, have a, we'll have a good amount of space to work with. And so this will be our template. And so if you have your final Nimbus pattern design already made, so if you have your final Nimbus pattern design already made, as we could see here, final Nimbus pattern, what we can do is we could actually have this pattern, we're just gonna add it to the mix. So we're not gonna copy or paste anything, we're just going to drag it into this file. And so if we remember how to work with our, if we remember how to work with our, our clipping mass and stuff, what we can do is we can rotate this, make sure that it's the, the skill that we want. And then we can right click, create clipping mask, and it clips to our rectangle, just like that. And the next thing that we can do is we can just give it a, a bounding box. And so we can give it a blending options. We'll go to blending options for the rectangle. We'll just give it a stroke. And the stroke will be black, just like that. And that should set up our, that should set us up for our uh, printing. And so what we'll do is we'll just uh, save this and we'll say that this is face mask print template. And so all we have to do is just send this to the printer now. In this lesson, lesson nine, I'm gonna take you through printing our actual sublimation art. And so with the printer, with the sublimation ink, we're gonna print on the sublimation paper that we have. And you wanna make sure that it's using the highest quality print settings available. Since the ink is pretty cheap, like compared to most ink especially, you wanna make sure that you get the most ink on the paper because if you do that, you're able to get the most ink on the face mask and then the colors are really gonna pop and the face mask will look really, really nice. So we wanna make sure that it's the best we could possibly do. So we'll go ahead and print. Now I have an Epson printer. So I'll go ahead and set this up for my Epson printer and I have it over a network make sure everything is set and we'll click print Go to C, continue printing.
And here we go. We have our die sub printed. It's our sublimation paper. So that's how you know. So lesson 10. Here we go. It's time for sublimating our face mask. So what we'll need to do is we need to take the design that we printed on the sublimation paper. We'll take heat tape to fasten the mask to the paper. We turn on our heat press and we place our heat mat right next to our heat press. We turn the heat press to 400 degrees. We could use Teflon sheets or parchment paper and we place that on the heat pad. Then we'll place our face mask on the center of the sublimation print and we're going to fasten the face mask with the thermal tape to the sublimation paper. Next we're going to place the sublimation paper facing up with the actual face mask facing down. We're going to place the Teflon sheet on top of it so that it looks like a sandwich between two Teflon sheets. The heat press we're going to use at 400 degrees we're going to press it for 60 seconds with about moderate pressure and then after that 60 seconds is up we're going to let it cool for another 60 seconds and then when we remove the paper and the tape from the mask you can admire the artwork and voila we have a sublimated cloth face mask and now we could add AR to it. Okay, so now that we have our, our design right here, I'll go ahead, turn on my Cricut Easy Press. And this is an amazing tool that allows me to do a lot of the, the sublimation. And so we'll have this set to about 400. Yep, 400. And we'll set this to about I would say a minute. And we'll just let this heat up. The next thing that we'll need are some Teflon sheets. So we'll put one Teflon sheet down on the mat. And this one will go above the mat on the paper. Next, we'll get our face mask. We have our cloth face mask right here. So you want to make sure that it is the right side out. And so you should see that the stitches are working on one side. And you can see the edges of the stitches on the back right here. So you want to make sure that it's going to be this side is going to be up. So we'll place that right there. Or rather, we'll place the we'll place it on the back. So we're going to turn it around so that the back side is up. We're going to place the face mask in the center there. Next, we're going to get some thermal tape. We're going to get some scissors. With those scissors, we're just going to cut some strips. And I'll just put those to the side. Just cut a whole bunch of strips. We're going to use this to fasten our face mask to the art. you want to make sure that the artwork does not move that's the last thing that we want it to happen we don't want it to move while it's heating and as you can see our heat press is ready
So we've got our heat press ready. We're going to put the artwork. We're going to fasten it. Fasten the artwork. Okay, so now that we have that connected, we're going to flip it upside down. So that the actual sublimation paper is facing up, we're going to place another sheet above it. Move this to the side. Watch out, it may be very hot. And then we're going to Grab our heat press, we're going to place it on top of it, make sure that it's evenly pressed. We're going to press go, we're going to hold and give it some good pressure. We're going to hold that for 60 seconds. Okay, now that that's done, you remove it. It will be steamy, don't worry. But as you can see, we have our sublimation. You can see the paper. And we're going to remove it by flipping it around. Just let it cool off for about, you know, 60 seconds. And once it cools off, you lift it up, and we have our AR face mask of a sublimated face mask.
and just go ahead and remove it. There may be some discoloration, but for the most part, everything should look good. Color should look very vibrant. Color should look vibrant. It's sublimated. We have our design, just like that. One of a kind design. To look to see if there's any imperfections. Hopefully there isn't. And we'll move on to making our app now. And building out that experience. Okay, so the best part of all this, section four, time to build out our AR app experience. And so this is where the augmented reality stuff comes in. Where with the sublimation and the design done, we are time to I mean, it's augmented reality time. Let's get it started. Here we go. So, lesson 11, time to set up Unity. So first we're gonna open up Unity Hub and Unity is really the go-to software for our augmented reality experiences. Essentially, Unity is about 60% of the market share for augmented reality. And so you can download Unity it's free, it's amazing. And essentially once you download Unity, we'll create a new project from the Unity Hub. You can name it and then we just click create. And then with Unity open, we're gonna change our build settings. This is gonna be for Android because Android is just so much easier to develop with. If you have an iPhone or an Apple device, like an iPad, then you could set it for iOS, but we'll do it for Android. And you can just do that by going to File, Build Settings, Switch Platform, and then selecting Android or iOS. And then from there, we're going to download the Vuforia SDK. And so just download that package from developer.vuforia.com. And you may have to sign up for an account. But if you want, you can actually get the uh, license code that I have in the resources. So download the resources if you already haven't. And we could get that license package for you because you definitely need that to make sure all these things work. And then more importantly, we're gonna import the package from Vuforia to Unity. And we can do that by going to Assets, Import Package, and then Custom Package. And then we should be all set up. It's time to build out that scene. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll open up the Unity Hub. We'll create a new project. We'll call this AR cloth face mask. And we'll click create. So now that we have our, so now that we have Unity open, we'll go to File, Build Settings. And for this, I'll be making my experience for Android. So I'll go ahead and just set Android. So just switch platform. If you wanna do iOS, you can. Now that it's set for that, Another thing that we will do is we're going to go to the web browser. We're going to go to developer.vuforia.com. And after you do that, we're going to download, go to downloads, and we're going to get the Unity package and make sure that you sign in. 
go to agree and it's just going to download our unity package and with that I will just add it to my packages right there my AR face mask and then I'll go to back to unity I'll go to assets then import package custom package and I'll just search for my AR face mask folder add Vuforia package import Once it does that, we'll go ahead and click update. Here we go, lesson 12, time to build out our AR scene. And so we can start by creating a new scene in our projects panel. And then from there, we could right click in the hierarchy and we could start adding our AR camera. And then from there, we'll go ahead, delete our main camera because we won't need that. Then we add our license code in the Vuforia configuration section, which you can find in our AR camera component in the inspector. So you just go to the inspector after you click the AR camera and then you find Vuforia configuration. Then you set Vuforia configuration to optimize quality and you also make sure to make sure to put that license code in there. And then back in our hierarchy in our scene, our AR scene, we can add an image target. And that should get us set up with everything. Okay, so now that we have the package set up, time for us to go in and set up our scenes. So we'll go to scenes and then we'll go in and we'll create a new scene. And so we'll go to create new scene, AR face mask, like that. So we'll go ahead, double click it, and it should open up right here. First thing we'll do is we will go to Vuforia engine, right click Vuforia engine, AR camera. I'm going to accept, add that camera. We're going to delete the main camera. So in the inspector, make sure that the main camera is on. Then we'll go to open Vuforia configuration engine. We'll click add license and that will open up our license manager. And we can go to get development key. We'll call this AR face mask test. We'll click OK, confirm, and we'll go ahead, click inside of it, and we're just going to copy. So just copy this. We'll go back to our license. We'll just copy that and paste it, just like that. And then we'll we'll have it for optimum optimized quality. And then we'll turn this to Yep, we'll just take that off. Model tracking, blah blah. All this should be all this should be good now. Yep, all this should be good. And so now 
we'll go ahead add an image target we'll add an image target and this is where things get very interesting so what we're going to do is we're going to actually go back to our our Photoshop file and we'll optimize the Photoshop file so that it has the, the right specs. So lesson 13, it's time to prep our image target from the design that we created. And so with it, we're going to rotate our image 90 degrees. And we're going to flip the image horizontal because when we sublimated and we put it onto our face mask, it actually flipped it. So we're going to have to flip it the other way so that the software recognizes it. Then we're going to make sure the design is a smart object. And within that smart object, we're going to crop the bounding box around it. Then we're going to make a rectangle with the same dimensions of the mask. And then we're going to try to match the shape of the face mask with the shape of our actual design. And so by doing that, you could just add a mask to the rectangle and then try to recreate that, that rounded area on the top and the bottom by using a mask layer and just removing a lot of the different image textures. And then what we'll do is we'll set the clipping mask to the new shape layer rather than the old one that used to be a rectangle. Now it's sort of like a curved, a curved rounded shape. And after that, we're going to export the image as a transparent PNG, and then we're going to edit to Unity. So with our Photoshop file, we'll go through and we'll have the rectangle. So rectangle one, and we'll select that as well. And what we'll do is we'll rotate it so that it's 90 degrees. And one thing that we forgot to do is we forgot to mirror it. And so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and transform and we will flip horizontal. And by flipping horizontal, it's going to mirror exactly what we want it. And then we're going to go through and we're going to make it a smart object. We're just going to name it face mask design. So now we'll just double click inside of it. We're going to change the bounding box. Do something a little tighter. And then we're going to create another rectangle. And we're going to have this one be 18 centimeters by 12 centimeters. This 18 by 12, we'll have this in the center. Then we're going to give it a little bit of, I'm going to modify it a little bit. Yeah, we're going to modify it a little bit. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask. And then from that mask, we're just going to try to mimic or recreate what the, the mask actually looks like. It's going to try to get that shape as, as close to 
as close as we possibly can. And so we know that the mask is pretty much this size. So we'll just try to recreate that. So go ahead, have the mask to the side. We'll just try to recreate that as good as we possibly can. And so I'll go ahead, grab a grab a brush, and you'll notice that the rectangle is white. So whenever I use the brush on black, it'll get it move the image away. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and try to just erase away as much as I possibly could. It's not going to be perfect, but it just needs to be a, a general idea. And the same for this bottom part as well. And then same for that. And same for that. So now that we have those, we'll go through and just release the clipping mask. And we'll set that clipping mask to this one. So now that we have this, we'll go ahead and make it a little bit smaller, more snug. And then we'll save this as an image. So Go to export, export as, you have it as a PNG, it's good. And then we will save it as our final pattern. So, lesson 14. It's time to set up our AR tracking with our image in Unity. So we'll do that by adding a image file to Unity using the dragging and dropping. And then we're going to create a new folder and we're going to place that in there. And in the image inspector, when you click the image, you're going to change it to 2D Sprite. And then you're going to click apply to save it. And we need that so that it recognizes within the software. And then in the AR scene hierarchy, you want to select the image target. And you want to make sure that the image settings are moved to from image and not from database. And then we're going to choose the design that we imported in and we're going to add it to the image target that we're referencing. And when you do that, within our scene view, you're going to see the image sort of laying on the ground. And then definitely double check to see that the scale is right and it should be good, but just make sure that the scale is right. Then to make sure that we're actually tracking some stuff, we're going to click on the image target, game object, and we're going to place a cube there. And you can do that by going to create, 3D object, and then cube. And we're just going to move the center of the object up so that the bottom of the 3D cube is on top of the image plane. So we'll make our way back to Unity. And we're going to add this image 
So we'll go ahead and create a new folder. So in our assets folder, create a new folder. We'll just say images. Boom. Open that. And we will just add our final Nimbus image to it. And so then we'll go ahead and click the image look at the inspector, change the default to Sprite 2D, and this will give us the transparency we need, like such. So now we have our, our Sprite 2D image. And then we're gonna to go to image behavior, gonna make sure it's from image, not from database or anything, but from image. And then we're going to add our final Nimbus image. So now, when we go through, remove the gizmos. We have our image right here. It's looking a little wonky. Not sure why it has that on it, but uh, such as like. Then again with the scale, make sure the scale is good. Um, yeah, so it's going to be, yep, two and then that. So that's good because it's all in centimeters. And then we'll just go ahead and save this and then we're going to test it out. So we're just gonna create a, a 3D cube. We're gonna put that on the image. We're just gonna scale it down gonna lift it up and we're gonna test it out and see if it see if this works fingers crossed And we have a working image. Yeah. So I will actually try it on now. Trying on the face mask.
Echo. Turn on lights.
Bingo. Okay. Here we go, lesson 15. So we're going to add rotation to the AR experience. And so first we're going to create an empty game object and we're going to use that as an animation anchor. We're going to name it rotation anchor. We're going to create 3D shapes and place them around that cube. And then now that we know that that anchor is there, we're going to actually hide the cube and then we're going to create a new script for our rotation. So right click, create a new C sharp script, name it. What I'll name it is a rotation script. And then I'll place the script on the rotation anchor game object. And after that, we'll open up Visual Studio by double clicking the script. And in the update method, we'll type transform dot rotate. And then we're going to have a open and close parentheses and then we're going to have a semicolon. Within the function, we're going to type new vector three, then within quotations, or within parentheses actually, we're going to have zero for the X rotation, 30 for the Y rotation, and zero for the Z rotation. And then we're going to multiply that with an asterisk and we're going to have time with the capital T dot delta time with the capital T. And that's going to be within the parentheses that we have. And then we're going to save the script and we're going to test it out. And it should be pretty interesting. But you guys didn't notice, we just did some code. So now that we have that working, we'll actually go through We'll actually go through and we'll create an empty object. And the way it's going to work is this empty game object is going to be the one that is going to be uh, rotating a little bit. And so we'll put some, we'll get a, a few spears. We'll just make these spheres be a little small. We'll move them around. I'm just going to add some interesting animation to this. So we'll duplicate the spear about three times and we'll go ahead and look from the top view. Have these spheres essentially will be circle, boom, they'll be close. Like that. Mm -hmm. So we'll actually get rid of the cube because we don't need the cube right now. And this game object will be the anchor. And so we'll actually have this anchor rotating around. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to assets, create a new script. We'll call this rotation script. And we'll place that rotation script on our game object. And we'll rename the game object rotation anchor. So as you can see, oops. go ahead, we'll try it again. Rotation anchor, boom. 
So we have a rotation anchor, we have our uh, four spheres, and essentially what we're going to do is when the animation comes up, or when the the face mag is, mask is recognized, we're just going to have it rotate these spheres around it. And so we'll go ahead and save it. We'll undo the rotation. Okay, so we're just going to open up Visual Studio. Once we open up Visual Studio, we're just going to need one script, really, and that's a uh, transform dot rotate. It's going to be new vector three. In parentheses, we're going to go 0, 30, that's going to be 30 degrees, and then 0. And so it's a 0 on the X, 30 on the Y, and then 0 on the Z. And we're going to multiply that times time dot delta time. 
Oops. Time dot delta time. And this just means that it's going to rotate, it's going to update every second, and every second, or every frame, it's going to rotate. And as it rotates, it's going to rotate 30 degrees. And that rotation 30 degrees is going to be based off of one frame is one second. And so that time delta time means that one frame is going to be equivalent to one second. And every second it's going to rotate 30 degrees. And so we're going to save that. Make sure the script works. Boom, boom, boom. Check the console. There's no errors, which is great. And Tim, we're going to test it out now. So we're going to save it. I'm going to save it with, I'm going to test it out with the face mask. So as you can see, I have it working now. And so actually, what we're going to do is we're just going to make it a little bit smaller now. So we're just going to make this anchor smaller. We're going to raise it up just a little bit. So now that we've made it a little bit smaller, we'll go ahead and test it out again. This shouldn't be too too wide from the from the face. So I'll go through, probably make them Yeah. So now go ahead and test it out again.
have a working face mask. As long as it's tracked, we got it working. And it rotates, just like that. So in lesson 16, we're going to add more animated elements. And so we're going to add more 3D objects, so that could be cubes, capsules, cylinders, whatever you want. Then we're going to change the sizes and spread them out a little bit more. Then we're going to make another rotation script and we're going to give it another name. For this one we use rotation script XYZ. And essentially we're going to copy the same stuff that we did for the rotation script that we had before. But we're going to change the values in the script. So we're going to change the X rotation and we're going to change the Z rotation. So X rotation is 15, Z rotation is 35. And if you want to change the Y rotation, you could change that to 25. And we're going to place all of those scripts or the new script. We're going to place that onto all the new shapes that we have. And then if you want, you could change the colors of all the different shapes that you want by creating a new material, uh, change the color for each one of those materials that you have, and then we could place those on the shapes as well. So at the end, you should have a script for rotation in all three directions, and you should have a new material on each one of your new objects. So now we can add a little extra. And so instead of it being Instead of it being rotating around this, what we can do is we can have cubes again. So I'll rot I'll get a cube, I'll get a cylinder, I'll get a say probably a probably a, a capsule probably and then we'll get rid of the spheres I guess we could have one sphere but we'll get rid of all the other ones we'll make these pretty decent a pretty decent size Just move this out here, move this out here, move this out here, and then just get rid of all but the first sphere. So now we have multiple, we have multiple things. And we'll actually make a, another rotation script. So we'll create script, we'll go rotation script X Y and Z because we're going to have it rotate along the X the Y and the Z so we'll go ahead enter that one and what we could do is we can just copy and paste from the other script that we have and just paste it in the update function but this time we're going to have this one be we'll say 15 degrees twenty five degrees and thirty five degrees like that and so what we'll do now is we'll make sure that it, everything is good and so what we'll do now is we'll select this the sphere the cube the cylinder and the capsule will scroll all the way down and we will add the script to every one of those all at once and so when you look at it the cylinder will have it the capsule will have it the cube and the sphere you won't notice the sphere but all the other ones you should notice and so now we will save it what we can do is we can create some materials 
So we'll create some materials. Material here. We'll create, uh, we'll say blue. And we'll go in and we'll just change the material to blue, like that. And we'll just move this, drag it over. And now we have a blue material. We'll go ahead and just duplicate this a couple of times. And we'll just say, we'll name red. yellow and green so now that we have those we have blue already so we'll just change this one to green just give it a darker color like that for red we'll change that to red and we'll change this one to yellow like that and so we'll make the capsule yellow we'll make the cylinder red we'll make the cube green and we will make the sphere blue just like that and so now let's try it out so now we have our rotation with our face mask. And we have a rotation on our face mask. We're on to a new section, and that is section five. So this time, we're going to actually try to improve our tracking with our AR. And this shouldn't be too bad, but if you follow along, you'll figure it out. As you can see, the experience happens, but it can be kind of spotty at times, and that can be very frustrating. And so what we can do is we can use our pattern, and we can improve on it. Patterns are great, but we often need to have a main element to anchor our tracking to. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to tweak the design so that we have better tracking by having a specific design on the center of the face that we can anchor the overall experience to. So we'll go ahead and do that. So in lesson 17, we're going to improve the tracking on the AR cloth face mask. And we're gonna do that by, in the design pattern, we will add the character to the center of the face mask pattern, and we'll rotate it and scale it as needed so that it fits perfectly with it. And then we're gonna give it a stroke by going to the blending options menu and playing around with the varying strokes of black and white and maybe another color to just give it some more contrast. The best way to track things is give it contrast. And so if you could do that, we're golden. And so you may notice that it is a little spotty with it. And so what we can do is we could actually modify it so that the, the design actually works with the face mask. And so because we have a pattern, the patterns don't necessarily work the best with our, uh, our image track that we have. And so what we can do is we could actually redesign the face mask so that the face mask uh, works and aligns with the center of the mouth and that will be our image target that we're going to be targeting with our with our design and so what we can do with that is we go back to our we'll go back to our design 
the pattern design that we set up. pattern design that we set up. We'll go back to it. We'll actually go to our Nimbus design. Nimbus design, we'll go through, we'll save as we'll just call it Nimbus Art. So we'll go through, we'll call it Nimbus Art. And so now that's our, our separate image that we have. We have Nimbus Art right here. And so then we have our print face mask template. We will add our Nimbus Art to it, like so. actually rotate it around like that. And we'll just modify this design a little bit so that it it works exactly how we want it to. So boom, we go through we could give it a, a little more differentiation. So I could give it a stroke. And we'll make sure the stroke is on the outside. Like so. And then what we can do is we can add an extra stroke. And this stroke will be a smaller one. And we'll have this one be white. And then we could just layer that on a little bit more. So we'll have, we could have a, an orange one. And that one just gets slightly smaller. Or rather, we could have a red one. Let's say the same red that we have for the, the mask. Yeah, just like that. And so this gives us a this gives us some neat uniqueness to our to our mask that we can we can work with. If anything, we could just have it just like this, but no, we'll have it just like this. And so again, we'll go ahead and create a, print out a new, a new mask. So we'll just go to print settings portrait, 
color. It's plain paper. I want to make sure it's a it's a pretty it's a good quality. So with the good quality, we'll have it be a presentation matte paper, and then we'll have it at high quality, and we won't have two-sided printing going, but we will have it a portrait, landscape, boom, boom, boom. I like it. And then, uh, and then we'll send it to the printer. We'll print it. Okay, so I have, okay, so I made another face mask. So this is the original that we have with our pattern and that turned out really good. And then this is the, in lesson 18, we are going to remake our AR cloth face mask with the modified design. And so essentially, we had to go through, redesign it. And so now that we have a new design, it's time to go through the same process again of sublimating. That's the problem with having a physical product that has some AR stuff to it, is that if you have any mess ups or if you need to iterate or improve on it, you actually have to create a new product. And so that's what we're gonna do with this. So today I decided to make an augmented reality face mask. First. I used uh, one of these images right here. I printed it out on my sublimation printer. I have an Epson EcoTank. I searched on Amazon for sublimation masks and I bought a whole bunch of them. When the mask came in, they came in packs of 10 and so I got about 60 of those. I put the mask upside down on the sheets and then I cover it. I use my Cricut Easy Press and I let it sit for about a minute at 400 I take it off, 
and I have my mask. I open up Unity, I add the Vuforia image target to it, as you can see here, and then I add my 3D models and some animation and actually play the animation in a very interesting sequence. So we have two face masks now, one with just the pattern and the other one with the pattern in our original image logo that we have. And so what we did is we combined the pattern with the original image and we have another one just like this. And so what we'll do is we'll go over here to Photoshop again. And you'll notice that with the image, lesson 19. It's time to prep the new image for our approved AR tracking. And so make sure to mirror the image to have the best recognition. And we can do that by just going to image, image rotation, and flip canvas horizontal. And this can be done in any photo editing software. Again, we're using Photoshop. Remember, it needs to be mirrored in order for it to be tracked correctly. So if you printed it out one way, you want to make sure that it's mirrored on your actual screen. Then we import the mask image into Unity. We replace the old image with the new image. And then we test it out. Okay, so we'll go over to Photoshop again. And this is the image that we printed out. This is our original image that we have. This is our original image that we have. I turned it to the side so that it makes, uh, I turned it to the side so that we're able to just see what it's gonna look like on our face instead of it being portrait, I made it landscape. And so I added the image, looks great. And so when you print it out, you have to understand that with sublimation, it's going to mirror the image. And so if we printed it out like this, then we need to make sure that before we send the image to unity for it to be image tracked we have to we have to go to image rotation and we need to flip horizontal so it needs to be the exact opposite way it needs to be mirrored otherwise it's not going to be tracked correctly and if it's not tracked correctly then the then the image target is not going to work with our our face mask which defeats the whole purpose of this and so one of the, the one of the reasons why I did add the the image in the center is because we need to we need to have an anchor for the face, and so in order for the image targets to actually work correctly, it needs to recognize a core image and then have the the assets around the side, and so we have our core image right here, and then the assets around the side are the the patterns that we had. And so all we're doing is combining the pattern with the illustration, our ori original illustration. And then we're going to, uh, then we're going to crop it. So we'll crop it just like this, move all the excess space. We'll go to export, export as. And then we'll export this as a PNG. And once we export this as a PNG, then we'll get a couple of files. And more importantly, we'll get this file right here. So now that we have that, so now that we have that, we'll go ahead and import our mask image into Unity. And we'll go ahead, 
turn it into a 2D sprite. We'll click apply. Now it's a 2D sprite. And then we'll go to our image target and we're going to replace it with the image target face mask like that. And, and as you can see, it looks just good, exactly how we want it. So now, we're going to go through and we're just going to test it. So we'll click play. We'll put the mask on. And there we go. Rotate to the side, rotate to the other side, up, down, and it follows the face. And it's using this target right here. Now in lesson 20, it's time to build out our test app. We've been iterating stuff with our computer, so now it's actually time to go out into the field. With our app prototype tested and the functions done, we want to see what the experience can be with our mobile phones. And so we'll do that by opening up the build settings in Unity, by just going to File and Build Settings, then we'll select Add Open Scene, and then from there, we're going to select build and name it. And then we'll save. Once we have our APK built, we're going to connect our phone to our computer, copy the APK over to the device, open it on the device and install it. And then we're going to run it and play around with the AR face mask. And so now that we have that, now that we have that set up, we're going to go ahead and export this out and build this out as a as a as an app so we're going to add the open scene we're going to build we'll say ar face mask zero zero one We'll save it. So now we're just going to copy and paste this into our device, move it over to the device, paste it, and we're going to open it up.
going to install Okay, okay, okay. Time for section six. In section six, we're gonna be customizing our AR experience even further. And this course is not about learning to do 3D models or any sort of 2D frame by frame animation. But if you have 3D models that you've made or if you have any other animated assets, you can add them to your experience to make it even more unique. And that's what this is all about using experimental technology to improve on things that we sort of experience in the real world and using AR to sort of up the ante. Now, the final thing that we'll do is we'll take it to the next level. And so uh, this isn't a course about how to create 3D models, but I do have some 3D models of Nimbus. And so what I'll do is I'll actually add those 3D models to the scene to wrap up the experience.
in Lesson 21. It's time to add custom 3D models and other assets to our AR experience. And so what we can do is we can take 3D models that you have, it's either an FBX or an OBJ format, and then we make a folder in our assets files and we'll create a new folder. And just name it whatever you want and then place all our 3D models in it. And take the time to actually organize the folders that you have as well. You could have one for scripts, one for materials, one for 3D models, one for image targets. Uh, feel free to get them all done. And then now that we have our 3D model in it, we want to go into the inspector and we're going to select the materials tab and we want to extract the materials to our 3D folder. And then if you have a texture or a map that sort of colors your 3D model, we want to import that in as well. And what we can do is in the new material that we have from our model that was extracted, you can go and you can place the texture in the albedo section of that material. And that will fully color and map it just how you had it in your other software. Unity does get kind of tricky when it comes to texturing models and stuff, but this will work if you did all the right things or if you just downloaded a texture pack. So at Nimbus, I had a 3D model made of Nimbus. Turned out pretty good. And so what I'll do is I'll use that 3D model and I'll add it to the experience. So the first thing I'll do is we have our map and we have our file. So we'll actually just make a folder. So go to assets. We'll go to create folder. We'll say 3D model. And with all the other ones, we'll actually make a, a new folder for the rest of the stuff as well. So we'll create one for scripts and then We'll create one for materials. We'll add the materials to the materials folder. We'll add the scripts to the scripts folder. And then we'll open up the 3D models folder. We'll move the Nimbus file to that and that's what we got so before we get started we actually need to actually get the information from it so we need to get the materials from it and we'll do that by extracting the materials we'll extract them to the 3d models asset we'll have a Lambert right there And we'll just move this map over, actually. And with the map, we'll do that. And now we have our image. And so all we did was we go through, we extracted out, we went to materials, we extracted out the material, which gave us this E Ambert or Lambert 2. And then that Lambert 2, we added this map file to it. We added the map file and we went to Albedo and we selected the map file. What you can do is you could also change it to just the regular uh, image that we had. And you'll notice how it gives him a, a crazy little polka dot pattern. But with this, we'll just go back to the albedo and we'll have the map file like that. And then it maps it to our actual character. So lesson 22, time to replace the 3D shape models that we have with custom models. And so select each one of the models that you want to replace. And for me, I added Nimbus to each one of the game objects, which is the model that I have. 
the 3D model should be a child of the 3D shapes that we have. So don't delete the 3D shapes. We're just going to parent those. And then we're going to increase the size accordingly, just how you want it. And we're going to give them some random rotations. And then we could remove the mesh render component from all the 3D shape objects so that the actual shape no longer shows up. You don't want to turn it off or deactivate it. You actually want to delete that component. Not the game object, but just the component within that game object. And you can find that in the inspector. So at Nimbus, I had a 3D model made of Nimbus. Turned out pretty good. And so what I'll do is I'll use that 3D model and I'll add it to the experience. So the first thing I'll do is we have our map and we have our file. So I actually just make a folder. So go to assets. We'll go to create folder. We'll say 3D model. And with all the other ones, we'll actually make a, a new folder for the rest of the stuff as well. So we'll create one for scripts and then We'll create one for materials. We'll add the materials to the materials folder. We'll add the scripts to the scripts folder. And then we'll open up the 3D models folder. We'll move the Nimbus file to that and that's what we got so before we get started we actually need to actually get the information from it so we need to get the materials from it and we'll do that by extracting the materials we'll extract them to the 3d models asset we'll have a Lambert right there And we'll just move this map over, actually. And with the map, we'll do that. And now we have our image. And so all we did was we go through, we extracted out, we went to materials, we extracted out the material, which gave us this E Ambert or Lambert 2. And then that Lambert 2, we added this map file to it. We added the map file and we went to Albedo and we selected the map file. What you can do is you could also change it to just the regular uh, image that we had. And you'll notice how it gives him a, a crazy little polka dot pattern. But with this, we'll just go back to the albedo and we'll have the map file like that. And then it maps it to our actual character. And so now we have, now we have Nimbus. Lesson 23. So it's time to duplicate the models and give them some depth. So what I'll do is I'll duplicate the rotation anchor game object. And then I'll rotate it and make it smaller so that it covers up a, a different level of space. And then I'll raise it up so that I'm able to give more dimension and depth to the actual composition that we're creating. So essentially we're putting it on another level plane. And then from there, we're going to repeat that again for another one. So at the end, we should have three, three different layers with the same sort of text and stuff on it. And then we'll text it out to see how it ends up turning out. And again, you could play around with the rotation and the scale. So now we can duplicate these. We could duplicate the whole thing. So we'll duplicate and then we could actually rotate this all together. We can make this smaller.
make it a little bit smaller. Then we could duplicate it again, raise it up a little bit more, rotate it again, and also make it a little bit smaller. Also make it a little bit smaller. So now we got this crazy looking, crazy looking thing. And let, let's actually not make it too, too far. Yep, so we got a we got a lot of nimbuses now. So we'll save it and we will test it out. So 24, less 24. Here we go. Time to make each rotation layer unique. And we'll do that by modifying our rotation script. And so we could modify the rotation script by making a public class, by typing public float rotation amount with the semicolon. And instead of having 30, and the rotation for the Y, we'll change that to rotation amount. And that's just gonna reference the public float, which is just a number, float equals number. So just the number that we have set. And this allows us to change the rotation value or degree in the inspector, opposed to changing it in the code. So essentially we just get this done and then we don't have to open up the code anymore. And then we save it and we could actually change it. In the inspector, if you select the rotation anchor game object, you'll see that the rotation script will have an input field to change the values. And so add a different value to each of the different anchor rotation game objects to have them rotate at different speeds. And typically, the smaller it is, the less of a degree value you want. The larger it is, the more of a degree value you want to show that it will rotate in a, at a different speed. And then we can test it out. Looks interesting. So what we can do is now, now that we have our anchor rotated, we can go back into our script and we can modify it a little bit more. So we'll go into our rotation script and we'll set a public class We're going to call it transform. Uh, public class, and we'll call it a float value, and it will be rotation. We'll just say rotation amount. And what we'll do is we'll copy that. And that will be the reference that we're going to have for our, our rotation now. So this will give us a little flexibility in terms of what we can, what our speeds are. And so now we should have a rotation amount right here. And so what we'll do is we'll say that this will be Seventy five. This will be fifty five, and this one will be thirty. And so that means that the smaller ones are going to be going to be thirty, 
the mid ones are going to be 55 and the larger ones are going to be 75. And so what we'll do is we'll test it out again. And you can see how it's changing. It's going a lot faster now. So let's let's see if we can make it differentiate a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll make the 55, we'll make that negative and we'll test it out. And it works just like that. In lesson 25, we're going to improve on the rotation scripts that we had again. And so with this, we're going to actually improve on the rotation script that we had for all of our Nimbus or custom game objects. Not the rotation anchor, but the custom 3D models that we added. And so in our rotation script, that we have the second one, we'll set a public class for our X rotation, our Y rotation, and our Z rotation. And then we'll replace the 15 that we had for the X value with X rotation. We'll replace the Y value with Y rotation, and we'll replace the Z value with Z rotation. And then we'll save it. It's pretty much the same process we did for our other rotation script. And then from there, we're going to go into our individual game objects. We're going to change the different values that we want. And you can have fun with this one. What I like to do is with all the different patterns that we have, maybe it's the same colors, maybe it's the same level or side, you could try to have some consistency by having them rotate or change in, in a very similar pattern. Then after that, go ahead and test it out. So what we'll do is we'll actually do the same thing with our rotation script, X, Y, Z. We'll do that as well. But instead, we're going to make a whole bunch of different public classes for these floats. So it's going to be public float X rotation. I'm going to do public float y rotation and we're going to do public float z rotation and so these are all the references that we need and so we're just going to replace the references in here with those and so we know Z rotation, Y rotation, and X rotation. Just like that. So now we could save it. It's going to be time delta time. And so now when we open up our, our files for the sphere and stuff, it's going to be, we're going to have these. And so what we could do is we can go through and we could select all of these, all the spheres, all the cubes, all the cylinders. They all have the same rotation. So what we could do is we could just give them a rotation of 45 on the X, negative 30 on the Y, and then we could have 60 on that. And what we could also do is we can modify that a little bit more. So say we want all the cubes 
to have rotation of 50. We want all the capsules to have a rotation of 66 on the X. And then we want all the spheres to have a rotation of negative negative 100 on the Z and 20 on the Y. And so with that we we're able to customize all of the different all the different layers pretty easily and pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and taste it, test it out. So now it looks like a whole bunch of asteroids, a big asteroid belt. And as you move your head around, it rotates with it. So now it's time to add more animation to our AR experience. And this is going to be unique animation now. So this is custom. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to create a folder and we need to name it. I like to call it animation controller. And then we're also going to create a empty game object and we'll also call that animation controller. And then from there we'll add the rotation game object anchor to the animation controller. And then we're going to add a timeline to the actual animation controller as well. And so we could do that by going to Windows, Sequencing, and Timeline. And then we're actually going to lock it to the top right corner. And then when you see that, that thing that says Create in the middle of the timeline, when you click Create, it's going to create a game object or a component for the animation controller to control the animation. So you just name it whatever you want as a timeline and then save it into your animation folder, animation controller folder. And what we'll do is we'll add activation tracks in the timeline for each rotation anchor. We'll add an activation track for all the different anchors and then we'll also add a animation track for each one of them so that we can control and make new animations. And this will be for our rotation anchor game object. So in order to create new animation, what you wanna do is you wanna select the red button on the timeline for each one of the rotation anchor animation layers. And then you can modify the transforms, you can change the scale, you can change the position, you can do all that stuff on the timeline by going to one part of the timeline and then modifying the game object and then going to another part and then modifying the game object. It'll create some keyframes for you automatically and then when you press play, it will actually do those keyframes. Honestly, if you understand basic animation principles, you could definitely rely on that in this technique. And then when you're done, we're gonna turn off play on awake on our game object, that is our animation controller. And then in the image target, we're gonna find the on target function and on target lost and found functions. You wanna find those. And you wanna click the plus sign. You wanna drag over our animation controller into that open space. And then you wanna make sure that you click the drop down menu so that you can have playable director click play for found and then stop for lost. And after that, we'll test it out and tweak it as needed. So the last and final thing that we'll play around is with the animation tools. And so with me, I love animation in Unity. And so I always try to find ways to add animation to it. 
And so what I'll do is I will go ahead, create a folder. We'll just call it animation. And we'll just create a new empty game object and we'll call it animation controller. And we'll add the anchors to it. And then we'll parent that to this. And so we'll go ahead and go to our timeline. So we just go to Windows, Sequencing, Timeline. And the first thing that we'll do is we'll actually parent it. So we'll make sure it's locked. No, it doesn't look like it's allowing me to lock it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So I will go ahead, animation controller, we'll go ahead and create. And in that, in our animation, we'll just say, um, we'll call it AR face mask timeline AR face mask timeline and then it makes an animation controller right here so what we'll do is we'll just lock it and if you go inside of it we see our timeline right here which is great and so then all we have to do is we go to our first our first anchor and we can add that to it. So we'll have activation track and we'll add an activation track for anchor two, activation track for anchor three. And then we'll have an animation track. So we'll do an animation track for anchor one as well. We'll lift that to the top. We'll start the record button. And all we're going to do is in this, and let me actually move this over to the side so I can see it. We're going to be modifying our transform tools. And so we're gonna modify the scale and we're gonna modify the rotation and position. So we're going to start off with first, since it's around 24 to 30 frames per second, we're going to first start off with first 30 frames is going to be a So the first 30 frames are going to be a rotation. So I'm just going to paste the component values and we have our component values like that. And so I will scale it up. So I'll scale it up and then go back to this keyframe and you could navigate the keyframes from here to here. Say I want to go to a, I want to go to this keyframe right here. So navigate it, boom. So I'll go back and I'll say that this got really big like that and then came down and so then with this one at zero we'll actually make it like lower and then scale down scale down to essentially zero. So on the timeline, it will open up like that. And 
and then we'll close that. There's our there's our first animation track right there. So the next one is going to be our anchor two. So again, we'll add an animation track. We'll have it set. And what we're going to do is we're going to, again, copy the component values that we want. And we're going to have it start around here. So we're going to start off at zero. We're just going to have it at zero. So just scale it all the way down. And then we're also going to have it start off at the bottom. We'll actually probably have that um, yeah we'll have it about here and we'll paste our values Then we'll go up a couple of frames or paste our values again. And then we'll go back those frames and we'll just scale this up and we'll lift it up just slightly. So it gives us a little bounce effect. We'll just do that a little, a little more, a little more. So boom, and then boom. And then we'll make sure that these go back down. And give this a little bit of a bounce. And we'll save that. And then last but not least, we'll go through. And we'll add another animation track just to animate in. And we'll start this one around here. So first, we want to make sure that we get our copy our components. And we want them to end up, uh, I guess, I don't like 76. 76 looks good. And we'll start the animation. We will paste our values here. Uh, first, we'll, we'll probably start with uh, going down and then scaling down to around zero. And then we'll go to around 70, 76. And we will paste our values in. So paste components. And then we'll go back about three frames. We'll scale up and we'll raise up. So raise up and scale up. And so now, when we see it, boom, boom, boom. And that's going to be our animation coming up. So if we look at it from a different angle, I 
like that. So now, wherever animation running, and that's connected to our animation controller. So we'll say not play on awake. What we're going to do is we're going to set the target. So on target found, we're going to use the animation controller, move it over here, and then the playable director will click play. And then on target lost, we'll click the plus, animation controller, we'll go to playable director, and we'll click stop. And so what that means is that when the target is found, it'll click play. When the target is lost, it'll stop it. And so we'll, we'll test it out now. just like that. So you'll notice that it was kind of wonky at the beginning. And so all we have to do is in order to make sure things aren't aren't messing up, we'll just lower this to about 90 I want to say 90, we'll say about like 30 seconds. So right after this one, right after this one, and then right after this one like that so we'll play around with we'll play around with it because these are the active ones and so this will be active for the animation but once the animation is over then it goes to the rotation and we want that to be a little more seamless so we'll give it a try again Actually, let's actually not have that. Let's not have it do that. So what we'll do is we'll go to around 90 seconds or 90 frames, which is about, yeah, about 90 frames. And if we remove the target, and then we put it back on. Just like that. So let's actually see if we could get it a little more seamless than how we have it right now. So we're just going to play around with the, the timing of it until it's perfect. We'll save it.
you see the target actually works so there you go and we finally made it finally made it to challenge three and with this we'll add more 3d models and animation to the AR experience you can build on the stuff that we touched on and push your creativity to the max. Then we're going to build out our app and share our experience. This is sort of the, the final send off. This is the final project, the final challenge. And I'm really excited to see what you guys are able to come up with. And so that concludes our session. Again, we can export this out as another app. If you want to add some other bells and whistles to it, you can. The challenge is make sure to be able to create and add other 3D models to it and, and see how far you can push it with the animation, see how far you can push it with all these other things that allow you to be as creative as possible. Like try to try to push your creativity as much as you can because this is this really changes the game. You know, if you're able to crank out AR face masks with your own original design and having fun with them, you know, these are this is we're in COVID season. It's this this is you know, these are the things that you can do to take your art and your creativity and your technology and combining those and taking those to the next level. And so again, thanks for sticking around with this project. Uh, post in the projects and in the chat and everything, all the great stuff that you're creating. Uh, if you're good at 3D modeling and stuff, uh, try to push the envelope with all your 3D models. Uh, allow yourself to, to create things that, that transcend just the screen, transcend the, the software and really make it really interactive. And it should be good, you know? So with this, we learned how to make a design, make a cloth face mask. We also learned how to add AR to it. And we learned how to just really be, be a creator in the true essence of what it is. Well, 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 hey, we finally made it. We finally made it. Throughout the journey, we we're able to make a one of a kind augmented reality face mask. In this course, you learn how to design a character with simple shapes. You learn how to design a pattern based off of your characters, make a pattern repeatable, sublimate a cloth face mask, build an augmented reality experience for our face mask with Unity and Vuforia, code a rotation animation with C-sharp, improve the tracking of our experience by tweaking the design, add 3D models to the experience, add custom animation to each of the 3D models using the timeline, and build an augmented reality app for an Android phone. The skills you learn are very, the skills you learn are the very same skills that I use in my work as a full stack augmented reality mobile developer. That means you can create every aspect of the augmented reality experience by yourself. I think as a creator, being able to build experiences out, make the creative process and all of its dynamics really unique, especially because you can create things that often you know, you just would not, um, you would only think about as you're navigating them. And especially just navigating all the different required skill sets that you have. And so just working as an interdisciplinary approach with this, it, it's, 
it's very interesting and it's very rewarding and, it, and quite frankly it's liberating and so i hope that this course helped you explore many new ideas so you know be sure to check out my other stuff my other creative courses where i explore animation illustration augmented reality comics and even other stuff Again, my name is Steven Christian. I'm a full stack AR mobile developer, a teaching artist, and a overall creator. And I'm glad that you enjoyed this. And I hope you join me again for another wonderful tutorial. So without further ado, go out there, create and conquer.